welcome and good morning, everyone. Here. Hope you're all fine and enjoying the nice weather, <laughs> which will probably change. <laughs> yeah. So this is Evan Woodruff. He's, he's working for, for Gordon Harris Art Supplies, uh, our partner here in, in New Zealand. Um, so um, he's, an, he's an artist himself. Um, he's also working, what is the position at Gordon Harris? Uh, product specialist. Oh, product specialist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm Marcus. I'm I'm from I'm from Germany from the from the Da Vinci Company. I'm in charge of the, of the international sales. So for me, it's a nice opportunity to, to see this part of the world and uh, to 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 talk to the to the sketchers here, the, the community. Um, so the lecture today will be um, um, about about the different synthetic fibers that are on the market. Of course, specifically the the Da, Vin the da Vinci the Da Vinci uh, synthetic brushes because there are so many now. Um, maybe for your better understanding, the, uh, who Da Vinci is. Um, so we have an Italian name, Da Vinci, from Leonardo Da Vinci, the famous Renaissance painter. But uh, we are a German producer, so the, um, we are one we are one of the largest brush producers in in Europe. And we are specialized in making fine art brushes. Um, the company started back in 1890, and over the years, the assortment has very much changed. And to, today, we are focusing on fine art, craft, school brushes. Uh, this is our main activity. And, uh, and we're doing also cosmetic brushes, um, dental brushes. For sculpting teeth, for painting teeth, um, very special, very, very special trade, and also for uh, for nail, for applying artificial nails and painting on nails. So this is yeah, this is where brushes are, for, are used. Um, uh, and yeah, our philosophy is to do quality. This is what Da Vinci is, is known for, and also to to of course to preserve the the traditional manufacturing, but also to to develop um, other production technologies and also to work with um, other material. And but this this is interesting and uh, uh, the, the with the quality. I mean, um, a lot of the brushes are made by hand. Now we're going to have some competitions. Mm -hmm. uh, the exact people to put a brush. Uh, not for this question, though, but but how many brushes do you think a brush maker can make in a day just the, the brush head so portion out the hair shape it put it into the ferrule shape it again how many per day five five and i've been paid recent <laughs> wages <laughs> uh, five. yes 500 a day oh. yeah. Oh, a, day. A, a, a day yeah but yeah but Wow. It depends on the shape and on the yes. size of the brush, but but this is an, an, an average number, five hundred. I would say for when we talk about a, a traditional round watercolor brush in a in a small or in a medium size. But but um, to to get a degree of brush making, five year masters course. Oh, yeah. So it's 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 a skill and and uh, it's nice. Mm -hmm. So the the, 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 the trade so the, 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 or the brush manufacturing is um, started back, back in the in the seventh century in our area. So already at that time there were there were brush makers in in, Nürn, in, in Nuremberg, which is the city where we are from. And um, yeah, I, so at that time um, it was already a very wealthy city because um, because of the trade that was going through. Uh, through the city, from from our geographic location, we were on just on a crossing from east to west and north to south. So there were lots of goods coming in and coming out, and um, yeah, and um, and there was at that time there was no fiber, of course, but there were um, furs from animals coming from the east, from Poland, from Russia, um, and uh, they were brought into the city, and uh, and and um, so the goods were there to make brushes. Uh, we have lots of woods all, around Nuremberg, so the, for the handles that was okay, and uh, so yeah, that's somehow how it started. And uh, 
Are there many people that do the hand work? Oh yeah, we have. So we have the company itself has 130 employees. So that is 100, 100 in the production, 30 in the office. And from the 100 people in the production, there are about uh, 20, 25 roughly. So it's a big part. It's a big part of this manual process. Different kinds of workers that you have. We have about uh, six thousand SKUs. Oof. Six. Um, six thousand different models of roughly. Yes, six thousand. That includes the different sizes. Yes, including all sizes. So we're talking. We are talking about around five hundred series that we wow. that we manufacture. Um, and most of them are on stock. And and this. Yes. Very, this is this is where I mean, and Marcus and I have known each other for too many years since yes. 1990. Like, yeah, um, but but as a as a painter, as an artist, um, the, the the subtleties on that connection between you and the surface um, makes such a difference to the different type of uh, mark making, let alone the different type of material you're using, whether it's a watercolor or acrylic or oil or gouache. That there's 500 different series of brushes seems like a lot, but in actual fact, um, you deal with that. But this is just for me, but then there are you know, millions of other artists all having their own unique way. I mean, everyone here, you look at the journals, are all, are all different. You know, it's, it's because we all have our own approach. So 500 is enough, but not too many. No, no, no. I think there are series where we produce a few dozens per year, but as a specialist, we think we should have to, we should have it. You know, brushes for restorating, brushes for gilding, uh, for marbling. This is all, also part of the of the assortment. And they're all made by hand. Not all, not all. It, it, it depends. It depends what, um, on the on the on the material which hair is used, and uh, also on the on the shape of the How of the brush. I know it's more more machine made now than than hand made. Yeah, from the from the quantity from the quantity. From the turnover, it's quite equal, but from the quantity, um, and because because with a new modern material, the, the synthetic fibers that, that requires also an introduction method, um, and uh, and and the fibers we are able to shape with machines, but you cannot machines cannot work with natural hair. That's very complicated because natural hair is never the same. It's uh, it's similar, but the diameter is not always the same. The, the structure is not always the same. So the portioning of um, of, uh, of 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 natural hair is very complicated, uh, and that's why that's why the machines are are doing uh, our machines are doing only the synthetic parts. Mm -hmm. But uh, nearly one million a year by hand. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. About that. So Twenty five yeah. people are busy tapping. Yeah. You can, if you visit the Da Vinci website, you can see the people working. Uh, making the, the, the brushes quite amazing. So all the synthetic brushes are made by machine? I would say 90%, yeah, yeah. because the machines are also not able to cope all, all the different sizes and shapes. Some special shapes like, like daggers, like liners, we cannot do with the machines, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the common shapes like, like round, flat, filberts, uh, we are able to produce with the, with the machines. That's, and, and the machine is, is doing also, quality. The machine is not is not made to to make it uh, to make it uh, cheaper. Uh, of course, we need to we we, we need to um, be profitable and uh, to reduce labor costs. But the machine is constructed to make it quality. So you won't see a difference between a handmade brush and the machine made brush. That's that's what our engineers uh, are always focusing on. And all the machines that we are using are built by ourselves. So we have we have engineers. Um, constructing the machines, maintaining the machines, so everything is in house, and also we do not we do not show this to to other to other people. No, I, we, I I was allowed to look, but yes, not, but not we never allow photos work. because yeah. this is all our our uh, yeah our not our knowledge yeah. that we that we developed over the years, and uh, so this machinery was developed not from one day to the other. So we started about thirty years ago. And the Da Vinci name you, you've been using for how long? So far? Uh, 71 years now. <laughs> so it was registered in 1952. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, by Mr. David. By Mr. David, who was the, 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 the owner and the, and the founder from the founder family. So, uh, yeah. 
Um, but it, it is the new synthetic fibers that have become very important uh, now, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, for the products. Because uh, the natural hair uh, uh, brushes, uh, the natural hair, it's just got more and more expensive. Uh, and also, I think the natural hair brushes are, 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 are very um, specialized now, and maybe more specialized than what our art practices require. We need more versatility. We want a brush that does a lot of different things. Um, uh, I remember when you first visited New Zealand and I was using my squirrel mop on rough watercolour paper. And you're like, oh, no, 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 just on the smooth paper. It was the brush. And I was like, well, you need to sell more brushes. So, <laughs> but but it, it was like, wow, okay, so I've got a mop brush, but I can only use it on, you know, these kinds of papers. This is not how an artist works. You know, we want a brush that's going to be hold on fluid, grab that one, here we go, it doesn't matter what I'm served for someone. So so the new generation synthetic um, brushes are a lot more uh, versatile. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Compared to the natural. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we so we start with, uh, yeah. with the presentation here. Wait, wait, how did I skip here? Like that? Um that one there, I think. Ah, here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So this is this is this is our 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 factory in Nuremberg. Two buildings next next to each other, about five thousand square square meters. This is the production facility. Good. So this is our our quality inspection. So we have a digital microscope. Uh, when we buy material, fibers, hair, uh, ferrules, uh, we check them on the microscope. Um, so we do random inspections uh, about about the, 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 see the structure. Because um, this is the stuff you can't see. Exa exactly. So you cannot you cannot see it with with, with your with your eyes if if the if there is maybe a damage on the fiber and or how the how the shape of the fiber is. So that is. Um, I mean, the presentation is about the, the fibers. Otherwise, it would be too long to talk about all the natural hair also. But um, but quality inspection, especially for the fiber, is very is very important because our machines uh, they need a very sta stable quality and also a very stable shape. Otherwise, they're not able to to run and to produce really quali quality. So this is why um, why we are doing uh, all these inspections with the fibers when they come come in, so that to is make sure. A picture of what you see, so that's to... Yeah, we will. It will come. It will come. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It will. It will. It, 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 it will come. So this is this is um, uh, uh, six hundred times magnification. I think this is um, how how fibers when you when you look on a on a single on a on a on a single fiber, and maybe just from the history. Uh, fibers for making brushes. Um, it started back in the 60s and it was a, a patent from, from Dupont, which is a European manufacturer of, of fibers. Um, and they, I don't know why, but, but they, maybe they thought um, there is no market for brush fibers or for making table fibers. So what happened? They sold the patent to Japan, to Taklon, uh, a fiber producer in Japan. And and they, over the years, developed that. So from the 60s to the late 90s, it was only Japan who had the monopoly of producing tapered filament. And I mean, and the Japanese engineers, are, I mean, are known to be very precise. And, uh, uh, um, and so they, over the, over the decades, they have really improved also the, the shape and the, the structure of the fiber. Because when the first fibers arrived to the to the brush market, um, the disadvantage was at that time that the, the outside surface was very slim, so the, the the brush couldn't absorb too much water. The, the the synthetic brushes were well accepted because because of their price. So um, so they really they 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 really were growing. The sales were grow, was growing over the years. Um, but there was always the problem of absorbing the liquid compared to the natural fiber, and this is what has really improved today. Um, but this is what what a tapered fiber is means: it has a, a thick end and a very pointed, fine, fine, a fine pointed 
tip. And, um, and when, uh, this is the wrong one, this one here. So, and this is, this is these are the, the straight fibers, straight, which, which were the first fibers who came out. And, uh, and you, you can see they're lying parallel next to each other. Um, and there's not, not so much space in between the, the fibers, means there's, um, uh, there's, there's a less color absorbance. absorbance. So you probably all picked up a brush, a synthetic brush, and gone, well, it's, you know, I've got to keep loading my brush to, to, to do a wash across an area, right? <laughs> because single fiber brushes uh, like this, or, or straight fiber brushes like this, just don't hold uh, the water between unless unless you do the mixing right yeah so and this 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 is what makes the difference uh between the the, the brushes and the brush manufacturers um so we have um the knowledge from the natural hair to mix different lengths together to have a right recipe uh, for a brush uh, to give the brush a specific memory and uh, this is what we also did from, uh, not from the right beginning in the 70s, but later in the 80s, that we mixed different diameters of fibers together in different lengths to improve color absorbency. And, uh, and yeah, but at that time, there were only straight fibers on the market. And so the brush was performing better in compared to a brush made of just one diameter and one length of fiber. But it was not, not possible to imitate a sable or to imitate a, a squirrel hair. Um, so the straight fiber brushes are, are still the most sold on the market, I would say, um, because of their yeah, versatility they, they do. And they have a nice tip. They have a very nice spring. Sometimes they are too springy. Um, but they can be used for not only for watercolor, but they can be used for ink, for acrylic, also for oil. And uh, and then and then with the with the years and this this is the this is a, the cross section actually when you when you when you would cut the brush here and and look at the bottom you will this is this is what you see here you have different diameters of fibers you have a very thick um, um, fiber here. A thinner, a thinner one, and you can also see they are not hundred percent round. They are a bit oval sometimes, irregular. Ir irregular, and also the outside, the outside surface, and this is what has also improved over the year. It's not completely slim, but a bit roughened. There's a little structure, and this is what the fiber producers do. They do not tell us how they do it, but <laughs> we, have, we have to we have to rely on what we and what we what we get, um, and it, it it seems to yeah it, it seems to improve this um, this uh, the structure um, yeah but this mixture for example this is our recipe we do not know how other brush makers do it and what we see when we look at other. Um, manufacturer brushes for manufacturers and we put them on the microscope um, many of them they use just one diameter still so um, so the, 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 the knowledge of mixing these fibers seems not to be everywhere so how many fibers do you need with one brush oh, this is difficult to say they're, they're different recipes with different brushes aren't they? yeah they are but there was i remember that we, we once did um a check on a five zero brush so this is a millimeter in diameter, and there there were more than seventy fibers just on the in the small brush. So on a on a on a size like that, there are a few hundred fibers. So it's dif it's, dif it's difficult to 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 count. And then what 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 came later about 10, 10, 15 years ago were the first crimped fibers. I can tell you, I visited in 2011. Okay, so it's yeah. and and um, well, I'll pass these round, and you can you can see how it goes. It's like um, one of these is synthetic, one of these is natural. Tell which is the, the different one. I sat with it for feel the difference. Um, so I sat with it for a few minutes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like you were doing now, 
uh, very difficult. That was 2011, and they were the new prototypes yeah. uh, for the synthetic squirrel. I remember also our brush makers, they couldn't believe that this is really a synthetic fiber when we've had the first, the first samples of these, of this, of this new fiber generation. Um, and this, and this is where it's where we started to um, then to supply more synthetic brushes to the watercolor market. Mm -hmm. to and the, the amount of absorption from the natural and synthetic with, with, with this, with this uh, you, can, you can see that there's many more spaces in between the fibers to hold the water uh, now and and in the in the past squirrel hair was the uh, hair because it, it looked like this that would hold the most fluid so that was the watercolor brush or brushes but it was a very delicate hair um, so just for watercolor and uh, and Mark was talking about know, using on a rough surface, so just for the smoother surface papers. But um, uh, also uh, very expensive, uh, and and really only watercolor. With the invention of the of the synthetic crimp fibers, all of a sudden you had the same water capacity oh, wow. uh, as the squirrel, yeah. but but uh, but much cheaper to produce. Um, much more versatile, so you can use it uh, with liquid acrylics, with inks, uh, as well as with watercolor, uh, and and much more robust. Excellent. Yeah, and, and the moths don't like them. You know, the first big moth brush I bought, the squirrel one, lasted a week before a moth ate the ate the outside of the, the hair uh, on a on a three hundred dollar brush. Uh, so if you do have natural squirrel brushes, you do want to. Put some uh, put some lavender or, or, or yeah. uh, some Don't leave them in drawers. Uh, yeah. So unless you put an, uh, some something inside, the cedar wood or whatever. Yeah. Otherwise, the moss will. And the price difference generally between the synthetic and the natural. Um, uh, 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 it depends on the size. But if you want a nice big brush like like that with, with the with the synthetic squirrel. Um, uh, you're, you're looking at two to three times the price for the, the difference. Did the synthetic will be more expensive? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Like a third uh, or a half it, to a third. It, 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 dep it depends on the size. So, in, in the small sizes, we are, when we talk about this particular brush, the Casaneo brush compared to a squirrel brush, you're talking about 30% price difference in the small sizes because there the labor costs are, are still very high. But since the since the raw material is much cheaper, the advantage comes more in the medium and large sizes. So when we talk about a, a decent size like eight or ten, we are talking about at least double or right. sometimes yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the price price difference. So yeah. 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 So, so with, with these new crimped fibers, um, we were able to mimic the, the, the squirrel hair, so the soft, the soft, the soft hair. And uh, this this started yeah in uh, 2011, 2012, and uh, within three to five years, we really we really had a nice market um, with this with these with these with these Casaneo brushes, and uh, there are today. There are about 10, 12 different series only within this Casaneo family. So you have not only the round and flat, you have you have daggers, you have liners, you have special liners with a with a with a belly and a and a and a tip inside. Um, and uh, yeah, so the and, and travel travel brushes um, with, with uh, that you can put in your bag and you can protect them. Uh, Extra short handles also to fit in watercolor boxes. So this is for us. This is a, a very important um, uh, uh, family for um, for for water for watercoloring um, um, and also for for um, ink or liquid acrylic. And one final question: Is the um, because at some point you might make a sneer or something. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've never used the synthetic brushes. And then there's made in China, $2 shop. Here's six brushes. So what's the difference between that brochure, rough category? And yeah, well, I mean, it's, 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 the, it's, it's surely the labor, the, the, labor, the labor cost, the manufacturing. 
the cost in China that is cheaper compared to Germany. Um, but that is when, when we look at those brushes uh, and we see the quality of fibers they are using, um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the same, and it's not only the fiber, it's also uh, the shape of, of the brush, which is, can be sometimes very irregular. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and then the, 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 the material that is used, uh, like the ferro, which is oftentimes only aluminum, uh, whereas we use brass, little plated brass ferrules, which are much more, more solid, more long lasting. Handles, um, the wood they are using, well, it's mostly sourced in Asia. Our wood is from Europe, from Europe, it's from sustainable forestry, it's a birch, birch wood from, from the Baltic states. So it's a, a wood that is also very, very stable, does not bend. Um, the, 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 the lacquering of the handles, so we, we have we use a, a five, five coat lacquer, so it's the, the, wow. the, the handle is dipped five times into a lacquer to, to ensure that, that, it's, that the layer is thick and um, that the moisture is not um, going into the, to the wood. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's the so whole process, the assembling process also. But, but, but also, I mean, the, the well, of course, the, because the, 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 the cheaper brushes only use one length and diameter of straight fiber. So yeah. of course it doesn't hold. Yeah. Uh, whereas the, yeah. uh, the G, even with the straight fiber brushes, are using different lengths, different thicknesses to hold more. But then with, with this, then there, there's the attraction of the crimped uh, fiber. So none of the fibers have, have been used by the G. Because so this they is make you look the good. interesting. <laughs> because when you, when you pick up the paint, you want to, do, to hold it as wood color, my father, who's, who's been painting for 80 years, he, he says, water color brush, you only need one, but you need it to come to a good point and hold a lot of fluid behind it. And then mm -hmm. you, can, you can do a lot with it. But, you know, here's, here's three very different brushes, but if you look at them, they kind of all look the same as the brush will. It looks very, very similar. Mm -hmm. But you've got uh, a, a straight fiber brush, just using straight fibers, but in different lengths and thicknesses. Um, you've got um, the new uh, variation of, of straight and crimped uh, fibers uh, here, and, and you've got a natural stable brush here. So um, knowing it's a bit like baking, you know, if this was if this was cooking for us, and I'd ask you all to bring flour along, and so what would flour be brought along? Just you would have just standard yeah. standard flour. Yeah. What, what about what about these flour? Like? What sort of flour would you pour on? Oh, I was just uh, feeling one of these is much different than the other one. Yeah, with the flour, the baking powder, <laughs> <laughs> stone brown. Yeah. But then we're gonna. I said uh, you know wood flour. And I said right, we're gonna bring, we're gonna bake sponge cakes. Granola. Yeah, right. So so you're not gonna be successful. And, and it's the same, you know, with, with artists, we do, I think, in this day and age, with uh, the, the, the ease of buying uh, materials, you can go into a $2 shop, there's some brushes. But, um, but if, if you're baking a cake, you need to know what the, what the materials are. And if, and if you're making a painting, it, it helps a lot to know what the materials are. Again, what the colors are you using, what, what the, the brushes are made of, and these are important questions to ask the, um, the shop uh, uh, the shop staff and, and, and the other artists and, and of course you know if you're, if you're fortunate enough to have uh, someone direct from from the manufacturer these these are very very different even these two here very very close but uh so but you just, the, just the one that's so much softer versus well in fact so would you if you only use natural brushes which one's the natural one I would, I would guess the one that's just so yeah. flexible. Yeah, it's, it's, right it's, it's got a slightly more grab, isn't it? Slightly more matte, uh, but very but close. Like right? that, no, feeling like that, I can't believe yeah. it. Yeah. So, You're right. You're really pale. We're really getting closer to that one, to the yeah. natural. So, so that will hold the whole thing. So they both hold the same amount of paint. I think we've got the, the video on this. Um, yes, we have a we have a video. It, that's, the net, that's the natural. The jack, complete the jack. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. but very, very close. Yeah, yeah. And if you're looking at at you know, difference, made fifty dollars. Mm. Right, well, it's, 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 it's,
So, so at, at the time where we where we started with these crimp fibers, there were then two two types. So we had the crimp fiber and we had the straight fiber, which was much much longer on the market. Um, and then and then um, already already almost ten years ago, the, the sable the sable brushes um, and the sable hair started to get more and more expensive. And, um, and so we thought also that it would be uh, important to have a stable imitation, but we couldn't we couldn't achieve this just by using straight fibers or by using crimp fiber. The crimp fiber was too soft, and the straight fiber was too springy. So what we did is we mixed straight and crimp fibers oh my God. together. And this this is this is the, the magnification. What you see here is so we have some wavy fibers and we have some straight fibers, and this. And the result was this brush that we launched uh, only last year. Actually, so it, it took us it took us more than three years to, to, to develop to develop this 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 series. Um, this is what we call Colineo. So from, from Kolinsky, Kolinsky red sable hair, which is the natural hair to mimic. And um, so this is a mixture of these two types of fibers, straight and crimp, and not only straight and crimp, but also different diameters. But this is Becoming a bit even more complicated. So um, I, I asked your your production your, your your technical team that you guys in the with that with all the magnification gear and then somebody asked how many fibers. They wouldn't tell me exactly. They said more than twelve, <laughs> less than twenty. <laughs> so different different types of fiber fibers in, yeah. in the common area. But then they said then there are different lengths of fiber and it's so. The 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 the, um, the recipe for the brush is very very complex. You know, it's not it's not a matter of getting you know the nylon and, and, and chuck it in. Yeah. So, so on this photo you can you can you can see and or you can imagine it the color the, the color absorption of the different fibers. So on the left side you have a straight fiber, a pure straight fiber. In the in the middle you have this new developed fiber which is a little bit bigger in the belly. But also the, the, straight, the, the middle is the middle is the mixed the mixed one crimp and yes. crimp and straight and on the right side you have a pure uh, oh. brush made of crimp fiber oh. and so the crimp fibers have they have the most color so for a higher color so we've got one here and just water right but the, the, the amount of, of water oh. that, you, that you get out of out of that, that brush brush but still that's more water that, that takes up that volume, right? Because the 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 the, uh, uh, the fibers open out when you when you put them into the water instead of staying in the same shape, it it, it balloons, right? And that's all crimp. And, and this is all crimp. The synthetic uh, squirrel. Mm -hmm. So you know the amount of fluid you're not having to keep going back and picking up the water. To do the and job. it comes in different sizes. Different sizes, different shapes. Uh, so you know, mm -hmm. flats, rounds, two types of rounds actually, uh, and long uh, riggers. Oh. Actually, if are you from Wellington? Well, you can take one uh, home to Wellington uh, yeah. for um, for the USK in, in Auckland. Uh, we've got some long uh, needle pointed riggers uh, with a bit of a belly to them. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, I sketched Auckland 2023 on it. <laughs> <laughs> but what is that line called for Da Vinci? What do you look for? So, so, the, so the synthetic squirrels are called Casaneo. This is from the Kazan squirrel here, but the Neo is its new, right? So Kazan Casaneo. Uh, C A S A N E O. C A S A. Yeah, that's the new crimp one. That's yeah. the new crimp one. And then the synthetic um, sables, which, which don't hold quite so much water, but they have a lot more spring. So that the, the casino being a squirrel is very floppy, fluid, soft kind of painting. But the colonneo, which is C O L N E. I N E O. And C O L. I, Cody, Neo, uh -huh. Neo, and that's from from the Cody. Um, and 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 the next bit, pass these around. Just 
and you can see here that the, that the squirrel you know it has no bounds right it's it's very it's a very uh fluid thirsty uh soft no bounds whereas the the colineo has it's got the spring so if you want that that uh um, controllable spring action um, safe brushes uh, <coughs> So are the Nova brushes like the old uh, style? Uh, yeah, that is that is straight straight fiber. fiber. That is straight fiber. This was actually okay. the first the first fiber brush we brought out yeah. in the early seventies. Okay. So no brush. So no. I can upgrade now to the new. <laughs> yeah, depending on the making technique. Yeah, but still today, Nova is our most popular brush okay. because it's so long on the market. Right. That's uh, what I thought. Uh, I love my note for, for uh, acrylic. Okay. Uh, and, and the maestro? Maestro is na this natural hair. So this is, yeah. this is, uh, is it, Siberian. Is it, it's a it's That's what I have the most of. And somebody bought one of these? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so this is a very unusual brush. As you can see, it's got this fat belly of. of, of very soft casanayo here, here, so the crimped fiber. Mm -hmm. And then it's got this needle uh, um, tongue of, of the uh, colonnade, the synthetic sable coming out of it. Um, and this is called a liner brush. And what happens with the liner brush is that soft, that soft belly of, of, of paint, uh, of, of casanayo, holds the, the uh, paint <coughs> and, and, and feeds it down the the line, uh, uh, the, the skinny liner brush. So you have almost like a marker um, mm -hmm. type uh, uh, brush, right? So you can you can you can draw and you can draw for uh, for several meters with this without having to refill. You can you can wash in areas as well, but yeah. Um, but it's a it's a very. <laughs> it was designed back in the sixties for the graphic design. Well, wow. no, 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 at that time there were no computers. I, I must say I have to I have to say no. No, I uh, when I was in, in Lisbon at the uh, Azulo uh, Museum there, which is the tile museum. If you're ever in Lisbon, incredible tile museum. I cried in front of a Moorish wall, but that's the kind of guy. I um, and, and there was one of these uh, brushes from the 16th century. Yeah, it was a, 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 a in quill, a, with, a, with a quill, in, in a quill. Yeah. Uh, and they used them for doing the uh, the designs, all of the lining for for the uh, for the tiles. Mm -hmm. So you can see how much this colonnade is is holding. Uh, it's, it's, this went so fast. The colonnade is that the mixture? That's the crimped fiber, the soft synthetic squirrel. Casanova okay, so is the synthetic squirrel. The colonnade is the synthetic sable. So that's that's your synthetic sable. Needle, needle coming out of the, the soft synthetic squirrel body. So that's that's you can you can take that out and keep it off. We have so, uh, my father in nineteen forty eight for a big sable brush cost my week's wages. So they're not so bad now. This one's four hundred dollars. <laughs> but but how many people? Go into the shop. Go right. Okay, four hundred dollar brush. So I'm a brush nerd. But mm -hmm. um, but it means that a lot of painters are painting with smaller brushes, right? Yes. This is the Colonnade. This is the synthetic sable, even bigger size than those. Seventy dollars. So now it's much more available. So all of a sudden, painters are going to be using bigger brushes because they can afford to. Mm -hmm. So this this change in technology is going to change. How paintings look, yeah. because ten years ago we wouldn't have seen many big brush marks or with or, watercolor, or, or big big loose stuff. Mm -hmm. But now it, it can be affordable. So all of a sudden the style of painting is going to change. So so a, a, a change in technology immediately makes a change in, in the outcome as well, which is quite incredible. Mm -hmm. This has happened before in history. So up until the late nineteenth century, only round brushes made. For all of the paintings of the Renaissance, the Baroque, it's all done with a round brush, which holds this big volume of paint. End of the 19th century, a bunch of upstarts wanted to change it all, so they took up what had been used only for lettering until that time, this is Western art. The flat brush, the Impressionists just didn't want this big volume, they just wanted to describe the world with short, heavy strokes. So, and it changed the way 
can't look this with changing material, changing the technology of your tool. So I think this is this is for me as an artist, this is uh, it's been phenomenal that that the the uh, that fluid capacity for squirrel, which was only for watercolor, now I can use with liquid acrylic for some and with the best of link. And, and big sable brushes like this, I can use them when I wash them properly. Not too bad. <laughs> you know, it's not four hundred dollars bad. No molds are gonna. The molds haven't adapted to the synthetic bodies. So what's, what's going to be the difference between using a synthetic squirrel or a synthetic? Uh, we need to know what that is, by the way. But what's the difference between a synthetic squirrel and a synthetic sable for painting? Well, one's one's pop, one's poppy, or one's more flexible. And yes. Just sorry, just very quickly, for 30 oh, seconds. I was just going to ask um, if you have recommendations for the best way to store brushes and travel with them as well. The best way to protect them so Would you like to answer that? Yeah. Yes. So, so don't, when they're wet, well, for start never leave them in the jar. When they're wet, don't stand them up upright, dry them flat. Uh, and and um, when, they're, uh, when, when you're traveling with them, it's like, it, it, not in an airtight case because you, if they're a natural here, they can grow mold. Um, so you want a little bit of air in there. If they grow a bit of mold, though, a bit of soap, the, the Da Vinci brush cleaning soap is uh, amazing. Um, Marcus is at the Gordon Harris booth until five o'clock tonight. Yep. Um, so if you've got more questions from the horse's mouth. Um, <laughs> incredible presentation. Just um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.